Today I'm going over my uh, 1986 Honda ATC 250 ES Big Red, but uh, as you'll see in a minute, this is not a Big Red anymore. I call this the Big Robin's Egg Blue. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Robin's Egg Blue was a Canadian color. Canada offered it in the Fortrax 300, I believe the Foreman 400, the Foreman 450, Foreman 350 um, in 93, and a few other models, I believe. Um, somewhat rare color, probably pretty common in Canada, but us guys in the States don't see it too often. A few years ago, I found one of these Fortrax 300s online in this color, and uh, I just fell in love with the color. I had to have it. My buddy Preston up in upstate New York found me a clean Fortrax 300 for sale in Vermont, and uh, I bought that. I've also had a couple uh, Foreman 350Ds in the Robin's Egg Blue color. I did uh, fall in love with the color. I like rare, weird stuff, even if it is kind of ugly. I think it's cool that Honda tried out some things that didn't work. Um, and, and I usually go after that type of stuff. The stuff that uh, people didn't like in the 80s didn't sell well. That makes it somewhat rare now. I like the color so much, I approached my buddy Jesse Meyer, the guy that owns um, Meyer Plastics, really great guy. I've talked about him in the past. Um, and I said, hey, is there any way we can get this color? He had it scanned, ordered the closest color sample he could find. It's basically spot on. So here it is, um, Robin's Egg Blue. I've been calling it Robin's Egg Blue. That's what uh, Meyer calls it now. And a lot of guys have called the Honda color for years. But actually, Honda called it Zenith Blue. I'm not sure why uh, guys started calling it Robin's Egg Blue instead, but it kind of stuck, and that's what everyone calls it now. But um, technically, it is Zenith Blue. This machine is on a 4-inch lift and stretch by Brad Rye down in Georgia. Um, he makes a lot of my custom parts. Uh, I sell some on my website, powersportsurplusllc.com. Here's the front lift couplers. I believe that's what you call them. Um, just slides into the stock fork upper. And then uh, the, the stock fork lower slide into that, clamp it down, works out really well, gets the lift that you want to match your rear. Get some nice meaty tires on there. There's a uh, 12 inch ITP bead locks with some 29 and a half inch outlaw tires on there. Really like the look of this. Doesn't ride too great on you know asphalt or hard pack, but does pretty good in the mud. I know a lot of guys are always asking me, what's the point of the Big meaty front tire, um, just like the way it looks, that's all. Form over function sometimes. There's the Honda Hoarders custom decal kit by Bruce Allman or of uh, Blue Line Graphics. Got my Power Sports Surplus sticker on there. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. My bought not built decal that pisses people off that I, uh, I just buy stuff, I don't build it myself. It's all right. Custom Brad Rye rear end. Honda Hoarders carved into it. It's a stock swing arm. Cut, stretched. New uh, bracket, adjustable bracket location for the rear swing arm. That's a Brad Rye disc brake kit. Really great upgrade for the Big Red. Um, if you're looking for one of those, go to my website. www.powersportssurplusllc.com I do have those in stock most of the time. Great page to follow on Instagram, ATC Daily. This has a custom um, mounted HMF muffler. It's custom mounted to the stock header, I should say. A buddy of mine did that, did a good job, sounds great. I also have these foot peg extensions. Um, these are just welded onto the stock foot pegs. I do sell the bolt-on kits on uh, my website. These, uh, this weld-on kit is made by uh, Dustin Bartley. He's on Facebook if you wanna hit him up or go to my website if you want the bolt-on extensions from uh, Brad Rye. My buddy, who's a really good fabricator welder, cut the stock intake below the gas tank on the Big Red, <clears throat> weld in um, an inlet for an inch and a half hose, I believe, to make my snorkels, because this is the intake that goes through the frame and right to the stock air box. Did that on both sides, some nice warrior snorkels on there. So if you're going deep, that works out well. I do also have a JR Trike Sports decal on there. I don't have any JR Trike Sports products on here yet, 
but I do plan to do a big bore kit eventually, or at least high compression. I'm not sure yet. I'll talk to Greg of JR Trike Sports, see what he plans or what he thinks is best. Um, hit up JR Trike Sports or Greg Jr. on Facebook, Instagram. He's got a lot of really cool products for a bunch of machines. I also stock uh, custom headlight guards on my website. These are made by Brad Rye as well. He does really great work. This has an LED headlight in it. Some bed liner from uh, Bedrock Liners in Connecticut. They did my racks. They did my headlight guard. They did my foot pegs. So I am changing this machine up a bit. I think I'm going to go with some... Uh, Meyer olive green fenders like my big green back there that is now sold already having seller's remorse and if it's, it's not even out of the building yet so i think i'm going to go green with this one i have a new set of fenders just needs a few few small upgrades anyways i do want to do the front disc brake kit most likely um i want to go with a big bore kit from jr trike sports or at least a high comp i have a um, gear reduction waiting to go in because uh, in really thick mud, the clutch just doesn't pull these things. It just starts slipping. Fenders have been beat on a little bit too. So switch it up a little bit maybe. So here we go. Took a few pumps. Pretty cold in here. End of January now in Connecticut. Um, this machine runs great. Um, I do need to replace that choke cable to make it a little easier to start in the cold. Quiet motor. It does smoke. I've had it through a few mud puddles. <laughs> Another upgrade uh, I'm going to go with is another product that I do have on my website. The uh, Mike's ATV Fix aftermarket CDI for these things um, is great if you're doing big motors um, or really if you're just having trouble with cold starting or if you just need a CDI in general. It's hard to get the OEM replacement sometimes. Here's the Mike's ATV Fix Performance CDI. Um, if you're looking for one of those, um, also on my website, powersportssurplusllc.com. This is for another one of my machines. I'll either just steal it and swap it onto here, or I will just grab another one, a new one, and uh, swap it on. Either way, I'm definitely going to put one on here eventually. Here's some of my Meyer stash, Meyer USA in California. You get these on my website, powersportsurplusllc.com. Here is the olive green. This is a discontinued color, so if you are interested in this, sorry, you can't get it. Um, there is a new Meyer olive green. They still call it olive green. It is darker. It's more of a forest green. Still a really great and popular color. So if you're interested in that, go to my website, uh, check them out. So once I put those on, it should look like this. This is, is was my 85 250ES big green. Recently sold it. Not even out of my possession yet. And I'm already having seller's remorse. So 
the brand new fenders are going to go on there. And it'll look something like this with a big lift on it. So uh, I had a bunch of guys ask me about this snorkel setup specifically on this machine. Like I said, I had a buddy cut. I'll just go over this machine and show you. Underneath the big red tank on each side, there's just a plate that goes over the stock intake. This is literally just a plate, and behind this is a hole on both sides. It's just like tack welded on there from the factory. So uh, what you do is you cut both of those plates off, and then you're left with a hole right behind there. Flush hole right on the frame on each side. And then you get some kind of uh, pipe, stock, whatever, cut it down, you know, whatever that is, about two to three inches. And if you are a fabricator, or if you know a fabricator, have them weld it on an angle off of your stock intake holes. Make sure you get the correct pipe size that'll match the hose that you're going with. I believe I have an inch and a half here. So we've got an inch and a half pipe, inch and a half hose, corrugated hose, so it flexes easily when you turn. Then we have these Warrior Snorkels. Once again, they have multiple sizes, so go with the size that you need. Make sure you order everything, you know, the same so it'll fit your machine, fit your pipes. These are on, uh, I think it's just warriorsnorkels.com or something like that. If you Google Warrior Snorkels, they're super cheap. I think it was like 50 bucks for both of these shipped. It came with uh, these rubber couplers. It did not come with this bracket. This bracket is just a conduit hanger two inch from like Home Depot Lowe's and I painted it up black and then I attached it to my stock headlight mount. This is the rear diff breather and it actually is ran up here. I have this one tied off on the headlight guard. This one is to that breather that's on the left side of the carburetor. This one is the other breather on the opposite side of the carburetor. There's one on each side on the stock 86 Big Red. Under my tank, it's ran. It's hard to see, but it comes down back into the carburetor and the breather. This fat one right here, this is the crankcase breather. I just have it ran to the headlight guard again because you don't want any fluids going into your crankcase, obviously. So as long as you have, uh, you know, wherever you're, breathers go above water and obviously your intake above water you should be good i went along uh all the joints and seals with uh dielectric grease try to help keep water out and this thing uh breathes pretty well up to the gas tank and water the overflow for the carburetor i'm just doing the janky way here with a bolt and if my carb starts overflowing I'll have to pay attention, take that bolt out and drain it. This is so if you're in deep water, it does not suck in any water. You do not want that happening. But uh, I'll show you in a minute. There are one-way valves you can place on this hose. This is a plastic one-way valve. Super simple, super cheap. The idea behind this is um, air fluids will go through one way, but will not go through the other way because of the valve inside. So you place this on the end of your breather or your overflow. And as long as it's functioning properly, if you're in deep water, if your carb starts overflowing, the gas can come out this end, but it will not suck up through the other end. <clears throat> Next time I have this thing out, I'll probably be working on swapping the fenders over to olive green. I'm going to have my buddy paint up the tank and forks. And uh, hopefully soon I'll have the JR Trike Sport big bore kit if you have any questions on this machine about any parts that i have on here or any parts that you saw in this video uh let me know you can comment below or you can go to my instagram or facebook uh, power sports surplus llc or obviously the website power sports surplus llc.com i